William Hague there. Now, in recent times, U.S. foreign policy has increased its focus on Asia, as we've seen recently. Last month, while visiting Australia, U.S. President Barack Obama, of course, announced that 2,500 U.S. troops will be stationed in the Northern Territory over coming years, all part of a move to counterbalance an aggressive China. Dr. Satu Lime is the director of the East-West Centre, and he joins us now in Sydney. Good morning. Great to see you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm very keen to ask you, firstly, uh, it's been some weeks since Barack Obama made that announcement in Canberra. How that announcement of much greater military ties, engagement with Australia and the wider region has gone down in the United States? Well, I think uh, most Americans feel that Asia is of growing importance. In fact, recent polling data suggests that uh, Americans, by majority, now think that Asia is more important to our future than uh, Europe is, for example. So the sense that we have to be engaged with Asia uh, diplomatically, economically, politically, uh, in security uh, dimensions is really something that most people understand. The trip was not at all uh, controversial. Uh, there are, of course, concerns about Asian competition on the economic front, but those go hand in hand with the opportunities that we have in the region. Is there a perception that the United States' successive administrations in Washington have taken this country, this region, for granted? Oh, no, not at all. I think uh, one of the uh, really remarkable and enduring features of our relationship with the wider Asia-Pacific region is that there are really not many bipartisan differences, whether Democrat or Republican or Independent. There is a general sense that our alliance commitments in the region, whether it be with Australia, of course, as a treaty ally, uh, Japan, Korea, Thailand, Philippines, but our role in providing stability on, which, on the basis of which prosperity is built, which leads to huge direct investment and trade relations with the region, are in America's national interest, and there's no sense that we're... Um, where we haven't been uh, uh, as part of the national consensus on this issue. Can you understand why China got uh, more than a bit anxious after President Obama made that announcement, uh, fearing what it sees as uh, you know, an, an undue U.S. military projection in the region? Well, I, you know, I, first of all, there's several things that can be said about that. First of all, 2,500 uh, rotational troops uh, rotating through um, and positioned in uh, northern Australia uh, doesn't really square with the numbers we have, for example, 60,000 total in Northeast Asia, the number of troops that we have transiting through the region and active in, in exercises with regional countries at their request and an, in agreement with these countries. Uh, a second, I would say that um, China wasn't surprised by any of the things we were doing. China was not in the dark about our larger engagement with the region, about the president's trip. You know, you'll have to remember uh, President Obama met with uh, President Hu at APEC in Honolulu. Uh, and that was, I think, the 10th face-to-face meeting between the leaders. So we, we've been very engaged with the Chinese uh, across the spectrum. Um, I think they know where we are. They probably didn't love everything um, that we were doing. But uh, there was not, no big surprises for them. We also saw uh, what was seen as some, uh, I suppose, not too gentle prodding by President Obama uh, during his time here in Australia. He referred to China as having to uh, accept what he described as the rules of the road, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, with power comes greater responsibility. So there's clearly some irritation within the administration about the way China is uh, conducting itself both economically and strategically. Well, that's absolutely right. Uh, I mean, there's no question that... The demand signal for United States presence in the region, in my memory, has never been higher. There are a lot of countries in the region who have, over the last 18, 24 months, uh, been concerned about Chinese behavior and Chinese responses in the region. Um, it is part of our kind of ongoing view that we welcome a partnership with China, but based on certain rules of the game and rules of the road to which China has, has signed on to and which are part of the global communi community's norms and rules of the road. So I don't think there are any surprises there. Um, there are some bilateral irritants such as the currency valuation issue in China. And um, there's a general consensus in the United States that China is uh, actively uh, manipulating its currency, notwithstanding its uh, you know, steady, steady rise. Um, so there are these irritants, but the larger game plan, I think, is to keep in mind is 
uh, not to set this up as a purely U.S.-China dyad and to think of this as we want a cooperative relationship with China, but there is a real demand pull from the region, too, to have an American presence that maintains stability and prosperity in light of some concerns about Chinese actions. And finally, we're heading, as you know, into a presidential election year in America. Can you see this approach from the U.S. to the Asia-Pacific region changing, for argument's sake, under a Republican president, Mitt Romney or Newt Gingrich? Um, not fundamentally. As I started out by saying, I think there's a real grounded bipartisan uh, assessment of where we need to be on Asia. There are you know, quibbles about this policy and this sequence of events, but nothing fundamental. Um, there will be political rhetoric and campaign rhetoric inevitably about issues relating to economics and human rights and relations with China. That's part of our process. Um, but again, just to show you, at least since the mid-70s, um, our fundamental baseline relations with China, notwithstanding the rhetoric of any political campaign, um, comes back to the center, which is we want a cooperative, work, working, uh, constructive relationship with China. But we also have commitments and assets and equities in the wider region, and um, those are not incompatible as long as we understand that uh, we're going to be doing both sets of things, working with China, working with the region in order to achieve our uh, national security interests and our economic interests. Okay, Satu Lime here, courtesy of the U.S. Study Centre in Sydney. Thank you very much for your analysis this morning. Thank you very much.